Hello everybody, my name is Jack and welcome back to my channel Genius Speaking where I teach Italian language for free. Today is a special video because I want to celebrate with you an important milestone. Our community reached 1000 subscribers. Yay! Kudos to all of you for sustaining the community and my work. So I appreciate that very much. However, celebrations are over because I want to dive directly into this topic. It is not about Italian language lesson, but it is about Italian culture. In fact, as you probably spoiled by reading the title below, I want to talk about an important piece of Italian history, the House of Savoy, Capetian Wetting, Windsor, Stuart, Romanov, Bonaparte, Medici, Sforza, Gonzaga, Habsburg, Borbone. Those are few of the many noble families that ruled Europe, that are ruling Europe. However, maybe few know about House of Savoy. Savoy ruled Northern Italy region Piemonte and they've been kings and queens of Italy. So you must know the story of House of Savoy to understand as well the story of Italian country. The first place I want to show you is called Reggia di Venaria Reale, can be translated as Palace of Royal Hunting Grounds and is located in region Piemonte, quite near Turin. You probably know Turin for the Juventus Stadium, the Egyptian Museum. Maybe few of you know that there is a place real close that is very beautiful. Reggia di Venaria Reale, it is listed in UNESCO Heritage from 1997 and today it is open for visitors. Paying the ticket you can visit the wall, basements, the first floor and all the gardens. I want to bring you here because as you first enter the exhibition you will be teleported back in a very suggestive hall containing paintings of every important member of Savoy's family. As you enter the hall, in fact, you can find the painting of the very first Savoy, Berold of Saxony, or in Italian, Beroldo di Sassonia. He is in fact considered the progenitor of Savoy's dynasty. According to an ancient tradition, this Berold had to leave the court of Saxony because having surprised the Empress together with her lover, and Berold, don't get me wrong, was a very chill guy. In fact, he had killed them both to avenge the outraged honor of his uncle, the Emperor of Saxony. So, from a region that can be tracked into modern southern Germany, he moved in Burgundy and later he became the regent of the Burgundian throne. His son, Umberto I, called Bianca Mano, White Hand, he lived between 1980 AD and 1084 AD. He was Count of Moriana and de facto the first Count of Savoy. But we must wait across 1300 and 1400 with the Count Amedeo VIII of Savoy. In fact, spoiler alert, he was the first member of House Savoy to receive the prestigious title of Duke. In fact, Amedeo had very good relationships with the French. In fact, in 1415, who does remember this important date? Yes, because you are genius speakers. We are talking about the Battle of Edzincourt. In fact, Count Amedeo VIII sent about 2,500 men to fight alongside the French. And although the French lost the Battle of Anzincourt, Amedeo of Savoy was rewarded for his services during the war. He managed to obtain from Emperor Sigismund of Saxony 
the transformation of the county of Savoy to a duchy in 1416. So Amedeo became the first Duke of Savoy. Next step in our time machine is between 1658 and 1679. In that time window, the Duke Carlo Emanuele II of Savoy entrusted the architects Amedeo di Castellamonte the building of the Palace of Benaria Reale. It took about 20 whole years to build the whole complex of Benaria Reale, and you can admire the final results. A little later, there's still an important milestone for the House of Savoy. In fact, between 1666 and 1732, we can name Vittorio Amedeo II of Savoy. He was a very important member of Savoy's family because he was the first of the Savoy's to be named King, King in the North. In fact, happens that the throne of Spain had remained vacant. In fact, the former king died without heirs. Of course, Louis XIV wanted the throne, but also Vittorio Amedeo claimed rights on the throne of Spain. So, Savoy's and French clashed in a religious battle in 1707, and French were completely annihilated. That's why Vittorio Amedeo renounced to the throne of Spain, but in return, he, he received the territories corresponding to uh, nowadays island of Sicily and Sardinia. So he became king of Sicily and Sardinia in one single step. However, that move did not ensure Savoy's family dominion on the island of Sicily, because soon after, Spain was strongly rearming itself, intending to regain back everything Spain had lost in Italy. That's why Spain managed to conquer back the island of Sardinia. However, in 1720, hostilities between House of Savoy and House of Spain ended, and Vittorio Amedeo II traded Sardinia closer to Piemonte with Sicily. Until now, while I have told you the story of the Savoy family from the year 1000 to the 18th century, Behind me, you have seen a small glimpse of the interior of the palace that you can visit. Now, I would like to give you a taste of the beautiful church of Santo Umberto, which is located exactly inside the palace complex. The church is considered one of the masterpieces of international baroque. It was built between 1716 and 1729. Another significant quarter of the palace is the Juvara Stables. The Juvara Stables consist of a large atrium overlooking the gardens. The large stable was used to contain around 200 horses at the time, but nowadays it is a site for temporary exhibitions. The room displays carriages, uniforms and divination Bucintoro. The Bucintoro was a ship, was commissioned by Vittorio Amedeo II and built in Venice between 1729 and 1731. Inside of this room you can also admire various carriages belong to Vittorio Emanuele II, who ascended to the throne of Italy, Furthermore, Napoleon's carriage is temporarily on display in this very room. 